Hello everyone. So in this video, I will show you how to find the volume of solid by applying some concepts of integration. So in my previous videos, I showed you how to find the area of a region bounded by different curves. So let us consider the region in the form of a rectangle and let us consider the line L, the axis of revolution. And if we want to revolve this rectangle over this line, then we can generate a right circular cylinder and if the region is a right triangle and we wish to revolve it over this line then we can generate a right circular cone <clears throat> finally when the region is a semicircle then we can generate a sphere and this three solid is what we call the solid of revolution uh, by definition a solid of revolution is a solid obtained when the region bounded by different curves is revolved about a certain axis of revolution and um, <clears throat> there are three methods and finding the volume of solid of revolution. The first method is the cylindrical disk method. The second one is the circular ring or the washer method. And then the third one is the cylindrical shell method. And this method depends on <clears throat> the relationship of the rectangular element and the axis of revolution. So in this video, I will first fit your cylindrical disk method. So this would be this would probably be the first part of the three parts videos on volume of solid of revolution. So for cylindrical disk method, let us consider the volume of a cylinder, which is equal to the product, the area of the base, and the height. And since the base of a cylinder is a circle, then we can say that the area of the base is equal to pi r squared times the height. Okay, and again, let us consider the function f of x. And then the line L happened to be the axis of revolution and the two vertical lines x equals a, x equals b. And then again, this is the region we are referring to. The region is bounded above by the curve y equals f of x. Below by the line L happened to be our axis of revolution and between two vertical lines x equals a, x equals b. And revolving this region over this line, then we can generate a solid of this form. And then we take element that is <clears throat> vertical. So again, this is the axis of revolution horizontal. And then we take element vertical. The question now is, when do we use the cylindrical disk method? And these two criteria uh, should be uh, achieved whenever you want to use the cylindrical disk method. The first one is that the rectangular element should be perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So when you take element that is perpendicular to the axis of revolution, then you use the cylindrical disk method. The second criteria is that the axis of revolution is one of the boundaries, that is, the element is touching <clears throat> the axis of revolution. This is the axis of revolution. These two vertical lines are the boundaries. And remember that the boundaries are always parallel to the element and then the element is perpendicular to the axis of revolution if you want to use the cylindrical this method. <clears throat> okay, so how do we find the volume of this entire solid? So the idea is that I will be dividing this solid into infinitely many cylinders of this form. So this is the first cylinder. The second cylinder is written up, is drawn somewhere here and then the eighth cylinder and then this is the, uh, the end cylinder. So the volume is now written as a sum of the volume of this cylinder, V1 plus V2, running until V sub n minus 1 plus V sub n. Okay. <clears throat> so the, again, to, to derive the volume of this region or, or this solid, we will just get a representative cylinder. So let's take this eighth cylinder out of this and we redraw it here. So our cylinder is now... Uh, represented with the radius r and the height delta x. So since the volume of a cylinder is written as a product of the base and the height, then we can express this volume as the product of a sub 1 of x delta sub 1 of x plus the product of a sub 2 of x delta sub 2 of x running until the product of a sub n x delta sub n of x. And since again, uh, the, the area of the base is pi r squared, then this equation can now be written of this form. We have pi r sub 1 squared delta sub 1 of x running until pi r sub n squared delta sub n of x. And writing this as summation notation, then we can have v equals the summation of pi r sub i squared delta sub i x where i runs from 1 to n. <clears throat> and again, just like what we did for the area of region bounded by different curves, we will take a very small norm delta x Okay, so as we take delta x 
uh, a very, very, very small number that's approaching zero, then the number of cylinders that we can represent here approaches a very large number as n approaching infinity. So we can now take the limit of this equation. So that's the limit of the summation of pi r sub i squared delta sub i of x where i runs from 1 to n as delta x approaching 0 and as n approaches infinity. And this can now be written, written in integration notation of the form b equals the integral of r squared dx evaluated from a to b times pi. And again, if the axis of revolution is the x-axis, then r is represented by f of x and that can now be written as pi times the integral of f of x squared dx evaluated from a to b and that allows us to use this theorem. If we let the function f be continuous on the closed interval a, b <clears throat> and we assume that f of x is greater than or equal to zero for all x in the closed interval a, b and if s is the solid of revolution obtained by revolving about the x-axis, the region bounded by the curve f of x, the x-axis, and the lines x equals a and x equals b, then the volume b in cubic units is given by b equals pi, the integral of f of x squared dx. Remember that the axis of revolution is the x-axis and is also one of the boundaries. <clears throat> okay. So the question now is, what if the axis of revolution is no longer the x-axis and we take element perpendicular to the axis of revolution and the axis of revolution is part of the region and then we use these theorems. If the axis of revolution is a line y equals x sub zero for any constant x sub zero, then if the region is bounded above by y equals f of x and the line y equals x sub zero, then the volume is equal to pi times the integral of f of x minus x sub zero squared dx evaluated from a to b. And if the axis of revolution is above the region and the region is bounded below by the curve y equals f of x and between two vertical lines x equals a, x equals b, then the volume is equal to pi times the integral of x sub zero minus f of x squared dx evaluated from a to b. And similarly, whenever the axis of revolution is the y-axis, Okay, and the region is bounded by the curve g of y, y equals c, y equals d, the y-axis, then the volume is given by pi times the integral of g of y squared dy evaluated from c to d. And then again, if the axis of revolution is no longer the y-axis, but the vertical lines x equals y sub zero, we use this remark. If the axis of revolution is a line x equals y sub zero for any constant y sub zero, then the volume b is equal to pi times the integral of y sub zero minus g of y squared dy evaluated from c to d. Again, you can you, you use this formula whenever the region is bounded on the left side by g of y, on the right side by x equals y sub zero, happen to be our axis of revolution, and between two horizontal lines, y equals c, y equals d. And if we get a region bounded on the right side by x equals g of y, the line x equals y sub zero on the right side happen to be our axis of revolution and between two horizontal lines y equals c y equals d then the volume b equals pi times the integral of g of y minus y sub zero squared dy evaluated from c to d this is just the same as x right minus x left equation of the curve on the right side of the region minus equation of the curve on the left side of the region Okay, so let's take some example. Ah, before that, I enumerated the helpful step on how to find the volume of solid of revolution by cylindrical disk method. The step one is, of course, to trace the curve. Number two is to identify the region described in the problem. Three is to choose the element, is either vertical or horizontal rectangular elements. When using cylindrical disk method, take element perpendicular to the axis of revolution. And step four, find the boundaries, and this is usually taken from the points of intersections. And uh, number five, revolve the region over the axis of revolution. And step six, set up the equation for the volume of the given solid and then integrate to find the volume. Okay, so these are the simple steps to follow and we now solve this problem. Okay, so we find the volume of the solid generated when the region bounded by x minus y plus one equals zero, y equals zero, x equals zero, and x equals one is revolved about the x-axis. Okay, so we first trace this 
uh, lines, x minus y plus 1, y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals 1. Okay? So we get the points of intersection. If y equals 0, so you replace y by 0, so you get x equals negative 1. If x equals 0, so you replace x by 0, you get y equals 1. So we have 0, 1. And then if x equals 1, again, replace it here, so you have y equals 2. So the point of intersections are negative 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 2. So, and then we now trace these uh, lines. This is your 0, 0. This is your negative 1, 0. Your 0, 1. And then your 1, 2. And then we draw the line. Y equals x plus 1. And then this is your x equals 0. This is your x equals 1. And then you have the region. This is our our axis of revolution, the x-axis, and then the region we are referring to is the bounded above by y equals x plus 1, and between two vertical lines, x equals 1, uh, x equals 0, and then the x-axis happen to be our axis of revolution. Since the axis of revolution is horizontal, and then we take element vertical, okay? So this is your r, and this is your dx or delta x. So when you revolve uh, this region over this line, then we can generate the solid, okay? And then we find the volume of this solid, okay? So we have, since the axis of revolution is the x-axis, by taking formula 1, v equals pi times the integral of f of x squared dx evaluated from a to b. And then we have pi, times the integral of x plus 1 squared dx evaluated from 0 to 1. This is your f of x, and then the boundaries are is from x equals 0 on the leftmost and x equals 1 on the rightmost. And then we keep on integrating. So we let u be equal to x plus 1, du equals dx. So we have pi integral of u squared du evaluated from 0 to 1. And then we have 1 third pi times the quantity x plus 1 cubed evaluated from 0 to 1. And then we evaluate the limit. We replace x by 1. So you have 1 third pi times 1 plus 1 cubed minus <clears throat> 1 third pi replace x by 0. 0 plus 1 to the third power. And then simplifying this, you have pi. 1 plus 1 is 2 to the third power is 8. Then times 1 third, that's 8 over 3 minus 1 cube is 1 times 1 third, that's 1 third. So finally, we have volume equals 7 third pi cubic units. Okay. Uh, what if the, the, the axis of revolution is no longer the x-axis? So we take this problem. Uh, we use the same uh, boundaries, x minus y plus 1 equals 0, y equals 2, x equals 0, and x equals 1, and we will be revol revolving this region over the line y equals 2. Again, we get the points of intersection. Okay? If y equals 0, we have x equals negative 1, then negative 1, 0, 0. When x is 0, we have y equals 1, then we have 0, 1. And finally, when x e is equal to 1, we have y equals 2, and we have 1, 2. And then, we have this point, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, and then we draw the line, y equals x plus 1, and then we draw the line, x equals 0, x equals 1, and then the line, y equals 2. And this is our element. Uh, again, the axis of revolution is y equals 2, which is horizontal, so we take element perpendicular to it, so we take vertical element. So this is r, this is dx, and then this is the axis of revolution. And when we revolve this region, so the region is a triangle, right triangle. When we revolve this region over this line, then we generate this solid. Okay? And then, take note that the axis of revolution is no longer the x-axis. So we find the volume. So we use this formula. Since the axis of revolution is no longer the x-axis and the region is bounded above by y equals 2 and below by the line y equals x plus 1. So we have v equals pi times the integral of x sub 0 minus f of x squared dx evaluated from a to b. So where x sub 0 is 2 and f of x is x plus 1. So we have this equation. And then simplifying, you have 2 minus x plus 1 is equal to 1 minus x squared dx. And then following the same procedure, we have this. And then finally, we have uh, the integral of this is equal to negative one-third pi 
1 minus x raised to the third power evaluated from 0 to 1. Okay, and then finally, uh, replacing x by 1, so you got negative 1 third pi times 1 minus 1 to the third power plus 1 third pi times 1 minus 0 to the third power. And remember that this is equal to 0, so finally we have v equals 1 third pi cubic units. Okay, one more. Say we find the volume of the solid when the first quadrant region bounded by y equals x squared, y equals 4, x equals 0 is revolved about the y-axis. So this time, we our axis of revolution is the y-axis. So the equation of the y-axis is x equals 0. And then we get the points of intersection. If x equals 0, obviously y is equal to 0. If y is equal to 4, then you take the square root of y. So x equals square root of y from here. y equals x squared by squaring, uh, taking the square root of both sides. So x equals square root of y. So actually, that's plus minus square root of pi. But since we are only uh, considering the region on the first quadrant, then I use the positive root for x. So we have x equals 2. Then you have 2, 4 as one of the intersection. And then we trace these curves. This is your x equals 0, the y-axis. This is the x-axis, the line y equals 0. This is the point 0, 0 as one of the, as one of the intersection. And another one is 2, 4. And then we draw the line y equals 4. That's y equals 4, x equals 0, and then the parabola y equals x squared. So the region is bounded above by y equals 4 below by y equals x squared and between two lines x equals zero. Okay. And this line x equals two. However, we will be using element that is horizontal because the axis of revolution is vertical. Okay. So the region now is bounded by y equals x squared on the right side x equals 0 on the left side, and between two horizontal lines, y equals 0, and y equals 4. Okay? So, when the when this region is revolved over this line, the, x, the, the line x equals 0, we have this solid. Okay? By the way, since we are using element that is horizontal, so the equation of the line that the curve sorry the equation of the parabola should be of the form x equals square root of y and then since we are on the first quadrant i use the positive root for x so that's x equals square root of y so we have this uh, solid and then we compute for the volume then we use this formula that's b equals pi times the integral of g of y squared dy evaluated from c to d and this is y equals 0, c. This is y equals 4, our d. So x equals square root of y. That's our g of y. And the volume is computed this way. Pi times the integral of square root of y squared dy evaluated from 0 to 4. And then simplifying, you have pi times the integral of y dy evaluated from 0 to 4. And then integrating, you have 1 half pi y squared evaluated from 0 to 4. Replacing y by 4 and then replacing y by 0, then you have this 1 half pi times 4 squared minus 1 half pi times 0 squared. And remember that this is equal to 0. So 4 squared is 16 times 1 half, then you have 8 pi cubic units. So that's it for now. And then you keep on tuning in. And the second part of this video, will I will repeat your uh, volume of solid of revolution by ring or washer method and the third part would be the cylindrical shell method.